Hello and uh, to everyone who is in this group, Shembin Chuling. First of all, I would like to thank the president of the group for giving me this opportunity to be part of the group. I was asked to give a series of Dharma talks in English. When I was first approached, I made it very clear that uh, it would be a total waste of your time because you already have so many great teachers who have been covering all kinds of Dharma topics. However, uh, the president insisted that I waste your time and so here I am. Anyways, before I uh, begin my actual talk, I would like to extend my uh, sincere appreciation and respect to all the teachers who have been uh, teaching in this group untiringly for the uh, past many years. So I thank you very much for your generosity in sharing Dharma. In terms of my topic, I thought that it would be more beneficial if I have a, uh, if I cover a structured course rather than uh, choosing a random topic uh, every week. So I decided to cover the main uh, topics from the Lamrim teaching. So before I dive into the Lamrim topics, I thought that it is important to begin with this topic, what is Dharma? Normally in my classes, I use uh, PowerPoint slides and I find it useful to me as a presenter and my other audience also uh, finds it helpful. So with the hope that you too will find it helpful, I'm going to use PowerPoints in all my uh, talks. So the question, why I chose this as the beginning topic is that I believe we really need to address this. We really need to understand what is the meaning of Dharma and what does it mean when we say I am practicing Dharma. When we say I am Dharma practitioner. If we fail to understand what Dharma what really what Dharma practice really means, then there is this danger of us investing so much of our time and effort in something we believe to be a Dharma practice, but it turns out to be not really Dharma practice. If such situation were to occur, that would be very unfortunate and that would be a real waste of our time and effort. So we need to really understand what constitutes as a Dharma practice. So when we understand that, we can then focus on Dharma practice alone. At the moment, it appears that it is quite muddy, muddle. It is fuzzy, the two li the lines between what is Dharma practice and what is not. The line between the two seems quite fuzzy 
to many of us. So first, what is the determining factor? What determines a practice as Dharma practice? And what are the criteria? Are there any uh, conditions that need to be present to qualify our practice as Dharma practice? So first, we need to ask ourselves, why are we doing Dharma practices? For instance, many of you have been tuning into these teachings and sometimes you spend hours and hours listening to these great teachings. So why? What is the motivation? What is the one that propels you to do? So when we are able to answer that, we will be able to decide whether our practice is a Dharma practice or not. Of course, the uh, what what you call the we do all this because we are driven by what is called the fundamental aspiration, which is to be happy and free from suffering. So that is uh, what you call underlying factor. And that is same with even the tiniest insects. Every sentient being is uh, what you call propelled by this aspiration, uh, this fundamental aspiration, seeking happiness and avoiding suffering. So there is no, there's nothing wrong about that. And we have all the rights to be free from suffering and to be happy. But the question is, when we seek the happiness, are we seeking a long-term happiness or a short-term happiness? Is our goal is only restricted to this life or it extends beyond this life? For most of us, it is limited. It is restricted. It is spotlighted only on this life's goal. For instance, some of us do Tara practices so that we can have long life. We can be cleared of any obstacles in our endeavor. We do Medicine Buddha practices so that we will be healed of our illnesses. We will have a good health. We do wealth practice, uh, 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 pujas to acquire more wealth, to double our assets. And then we do all kinds of prayers for our children to be successful in their education, to get a good job, to be successful at the uh, U.S. visa interview. So when we, when we examine all this, our concern is really over this life's happiness and goals. So the Katampa Master says that so very decisive that any practice that concerns only this life's goal is not a Dharma practice. One time a Kadamba master saw somebody engaging in the practice of generosity or practice of giving. And that Kadamba Master told uh, this person that it is it's very noble of you to engage in the practice of giving. 
but you should practice Dharma. So this clearly suggests that these virtuous uh, actions do not automatically equal to Dharma practice. So it all depends on our motivation. What is our motivation? Sometimes we make offerings to monasteries. In some monasteries, the number of monks are so great that when we make a whole day offering, it can be quite expensive. But if our motivation concerns only about this life, for instance, or if I do this offering, people will praise for my generosity. Our family will be hailed for being so generous. And then sometimes when we do practice, we spend so much time in the prayer room because we seek the recognition that we are a good practitioner. We wanted to hear people to praise, sing the song about, sing praise about us. Wow, look at him. Each day he spends hours in his prayers room doing meditation. What a great practitioner. So if we do any practices, seeking these praise, fame, success only in this life, then all these practices does not qualify as Dharma practice. So from the beginning, no matter whether we are doing a, a, what do you call, a long practice or short practice, whatever practice it is, we must always examine our motivation. To qualify as a Dharma practice, the bare minimum is that our concerns, our motivation must extend beyond this life's purpose. Of course, if you are able to do any practice with a bodhicitta mind, that's really great. If not, at least you must be concerned about your future life. You must do any practice because you don't want to be born in the lower realms. You want to ensure a good rebirth in the future. So if you are able to do any practice, even with that minimum uh, kind of concern, that can qualify as Dharma practice. So now you see the importance of understanding what uh, qualifies as Dharma practice. I'm sure that many of you, like me, have been doing some practices, but when you scrutinize that practice, it turns out that it's not really Dharma practice. Of course, that is a virtue, but it's not really Dharma practice per se. So today I end here, and then we will continue uh, discussing on this topic. Thank you.